So welcome everybody. My name is Paula Gilmore and I'm the host of CPD Live 2019 Focus. Today's webinar is Ipso Facto Reforms. Our presenter today is Sally Whiteman, a barrister. Sally's principal practice areas are commercial, consumer, employment, regulatory and criminal law. The learning outcomes for today's session are to analyse the stay provisions in respect of ipso facto clauses, discuss exceptions to the reforms and offer some practical guidance. So thanks Sally and over to you. As you all know, we're here for the ipso facto reforms. Um, they came into effect on the 1st of July, 2018. Um, and in very broad uh, terms, they reform, uh, the reforms prevent the exercise of rights under ipso facto clauses. Um, I'll take you through the stay provision. So the operative provision providing the stay on exercising um, a right um, under an ipso facto clause. So i.e. Um, a stay on enforcing a right to terminate, for instance. Um, we'll speak to the events that are involved in these or concern these reforms. So um, not all events will uh, lead to or, or engage these ipso facto reforms. A right will only be un unenforceable by reason of the reforms um, if it's triggered by a particular event. So exempt rights. Um, the exempt rights are in the Corporations Act to an extent. There are some exempt rights, um, but um, uh, the majority of the um, exemptions occur or appear in the declaration. Okay, so orders for rights to be enforceable only with leave. Uh, okay, so this is quite a broad provision uh, and it's it'll be an interesting one to see how it applies in practice like some of the other provisions um subsections the the court may order that one or more rights under a contract agreement or arrangement are enforceable against a company only with the leave of the court and in accordance with such terms if any as the court imposes um, and there's a useful example provided there in the legislation itself um, the order can could be sought for a right to terminate for convenience. 